Good morning. Previously, we learned how to determine the center of mass of uniform rigid objects with shape and determined the exposition center of mass of a uniform right triangle. Today, we will use the same approach to determine the center of mass of a non-uniform rigid object with shape. But before we do that, let's take a moment to discuss three different kinds of density. Three different kinds of density? Yeah, I thought there was only one called density. density. Flippin' physics. Right. Let's start with the one you are most familiar with, which is volumetric mass density and equals mass divided by volume and has a symbol of the lowercase Greek symbol rho. This is actually not the only type of volumetric density which exists. There is also volumetric weight density and volumetric charge density, for example. However, today we are only going to discuss mass densities. In addition to volumetric mass density, there is also a mass density that uses the lowercase Greek letter sigma, which equals mass divided by area and is called surface mass density. There is also a mass density that uses the lowercase Greek letter lambda, which equals mass divided by length and is linear mass density. So yeah, lots of different types of mass densities. Wow. Oh, yeah. Today we are going to do an example which uses mass per unit length, or linear mass density. Bo, please read the problem, and Bobby, please translate. Determine the exposition center of mass of a horizontally oriented rod with a length of 0 0.65 meters, and lambda linear mass density equal to 43 minus 21 x squared grams per meter. Well, our knowns are pretty obvious. Length equals 0 0.65 meters. Linear mass density equals 43 minus 21 x squared grams per meter. And we are trying to find the exposition center of mass. Mr. P, did you just make this problem up in your head? What makes you think he did that? The numbers go 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That seems made up to me. Yeah. Why, yes, Bo, I did fabricate the problem. It is not real. Then we won't know if the physics works. But we will be able to tell if the physics makes sense. How? Well, if the rod were of uniform density, its center of mass would be at its geometric center right in its middle, or 0 0.325 meters from either end. Considering the rod has a linear mass density of 43 minus 21 x squared grams per meter, Billy, where would you expect its center of mass to be relative to the geometric center of the rod? Uh, how would we know that? When x equals zero, the linear mass density of the rod equals 43 grams per meter, and as the x position increases according to the equation, the linear mass density of the rod decreases. Oh, that means the linear mass density of the rod decreases from left to right, so we should expect the rod to have more mass concentrated to the left of its center than to the right, so the center of mass of the rod should be a bit to the left of the geometric center of the rod. Yep. Exactly, Billy. Bobby, what equation are we going to use to determine the exposition center of mass of this rigid object with shape of non-uniform density? Well, when we did the rigid object with shape of uniform density, we used exposition center of mass equals the one over the total mass of the object times the integral of exposition with respect to mass. Do we use the same equation here? Yes, Bobby, that is the equation we are going to use here. However, rather than starting with that equation directly, we are first going to, det to determine the total mass of the rod because we will need to use that in the exposition center of mass integral equation. In order to find the total mass of the rod, we are also going to use an integral. The total mass of the rod equals the integral with respect to mass. Bo, how are we going to do this? This is similar to what we did last time. We need to consider the rod to be made up of an infinite number of infinitesimally small objects dm. Each piece dm is going to be located a variable distance x from the left end of the rod, each piece dm will have an infinitesimally small width dx. Uh, Do not forget to use lambda. The linear mass density. 
Right. Linear mass density equals, well, for the whole rod, it equals the total mass of the rod divided by the length of the whole rod, L. For the infinitesimally small piece, dm, it, it, its linear mass density equals its mass, or dm, divided by its width, which is the infinitesimally small width, dx. Therefore, dm equals lambda times dx. We can substitute that back into the equation for total mass of the rod. Actually, now we have all the information we need. Lambda equals 43 minus 21 times x squared. And this is a definite integral with limits for the x position of dm, which go from the left end of the rod to the right end of the rod, or from zero to the length of the rod, which is 0 0.65 meters. The integral works out to be 43x minus 21x cubed over 3, with the same limits as before. 21 over 3 is 7. We can substitute in our limits, and we get 24.9925 grams for the total mass of the non-uniform bar. Wait a second. The linear mass density of the rod does not equal total mass of the rod divided by length of the rod. It doesn't? No. The average linear mass density equals the total mass divided by the rod length. Oh. Right. The linear mass density changes as a function of position, so it cannot equal the total mass over length because that would be just a single number and not change as a function of position. Exactly. Oops. Thank you, everybody. Billy, please find the exposition center of mass of the rod. At this point, we use the equation exposition center of mass equals the inverse of the total mass of the rod times the integral of exposition with respect to mass. This is very similar to what Bo just did. We substitute in the limits of 0 and 0 0.65 meters and lambda of 43 minus 21x squared. Multiply the x through to get 43x minus 21x cubed. Take the integral to get the inverse of the total mass of the rod times the quantity 43x squared over 2 minus 21x to the fourth power over 4. With the same limits. Substitute in the limits and we get, wait for it, boop, 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 boop. hold up, um, 0 0.325961 meters or well, 33 centimeters with two sig figs and in centimeters. That's not right. Y yeah. It's to the right of the geometric center of the rod. Wait, we don't even get to say the physics makes sense? Nope. We made a mistake. Where? We failed to use a calculator correctly. Bo, you squared 0 0.65 rather than cubed it. Our total mass calculation is incorrect. The total mass of the rod, when calculated correctly, is 26.0276 grams. Oh, oh sorry. N no, no, Bo, this is not your fault. I have said it many times before. Y'all need to be doing all of these calculations yourselves. You need to be doing your calculator calisthenics. If you were all doing these calculations, you would have caught the mistake. When it comes to tests and exams, the last thing you want to discover is that you have not been doing your calculator calisthenics and your calculator does not know what it is doing. Way too many times I have had students who understand the physics but fail to do basic calculator calculations correctly. Therefore, they get incorrect and illogical answers like this one. And they think they do not understand the physics when in fact they do understand the physics they just have lazy calculators. So please, do not let your calculator be lazy. Do your calculator calisthenics. Calculator calisthenics. Got it. Sometimes my calculator is lazy. I'll have to talk to them about that. I don't even have a calculator. You are a calculator. Hold up.
then the physics makes sense. The exposition center of mass of the rod is a bit to the left of the center of the rod, just like we predicted. Yay! The physics makes sense. The physics makes sense. Uh, uh, that, <laughs> that does not really work, does it? No. Yeah. Bummer. I am glad the physics makes sense. <laughs> Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.